Hey there students, in today's video I'm going to be going over perpetual inventory accounting. Now we're going to be going over some of the concepts, talking about that for a little bit just so you understand it, and then later we're going to go through some big practice problems so you can fully apply this information. Now, make sure to watch toward the end because these problems I'm gonna give you are gonna really tie everything together. So make sure to watch toward the end. Now first, what is perpetual inventory accounting? Well, when you think about it, think about a clock. A clock is always going, right? It never stops. And that's kind of how perpetual inventory is. It's always updating. So whether you make a sale and inventory leaves, you update it. If you make a purchase, and inventory goes up, you add to your inventory, you update it in real time. Now it's a little different, right, compared to periodic inventory where you wait till the end of the period and then you actually record uh, the sale or you record the change in inventory with periodic. Perpetual, always updating. Periodic, you kind of wait toward the end to uh, reconcile your accounts. So in the end, really, it revolves mainly around purchases and sales. Right? You're just tracking your sales and you're tracking your purchases to really see the change in inventory. However, there are some special rules with perpetual inventory accounting. So make sure you watch a little further in this video. I'm going to go over those special rules. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through some important concepts here about purchases in perpetual inventory accounting. How do purchases work? Well, when a company makes a purchase, it's going to go right in to inventory. You're going to add to it right away. And that's a key thing here because like periodic inventory, it would go right into purchases. But when you buy something in perpetual inventory accounting, it goes right into your inventory. So it looks kind of, it just, you add it right away. It's updated in real time. So how that kind of looks in a journal entry is you would actually record a debit to inventory, so because it's an asset, right? Inventory is increasing here. And then you would credit, it depends on what you pay with, right? So you could credit accounts payable, you can credit cash, it just depends on what you pay with. So we'll just say they paid for it with cash. So that's how purchases work. Again, it's updating in real time. That's how perpetual inventory accounting works. It's always updating in real time. As soon as you bought the goods, it goes right into inventory and you actually record that right away when you get that um, those goods that you bought. Okay, so on the sales side now, right? So now we talked about purchases, but let's talk about sales. What happens to in perpetual inventory accounting when there's a sale? So when there's a sale, it actually goes like this. First off, on the sales end, right, you have to go ahead and record getting either cash, and this is a debit, by the way, I'll put a little DR there so you know, you would record cash increasing and then credit your revenue. And that can be cash or, you know, AR is what I call it, accounts receivable. Either one is fine. So you're showing here, when you make a sale, you're showing cash, you know, going up or AR and revenue going up. But the, on the inventory side, since it's perpetual, right, inventory updates in real time, you gotta show when you made that sale and you sold that good, you gotta show inventory going down immediately. So what you would do is you debit, let me see here, there we go, debit cost of goods sold, now let's call it cost of goods, and then you're gonna credit, immediately you credit inventory to show it decreasing. So inventory is going down immediately, right? Because inventory is updated in real time. And that's very, very, very important. So that's how it looks on the sales end. Now there's some special rules. Now pay close attention here. There's some special rules we need to talk about. So the first one is what we call freight in. Now, what is freight in? Well, freight in just means 
you as a company bought some goods and you have to pay for shipping to get those goods to your business, right? It's like if you go onto Amazon, you got to pay for shipping, right, to get whatever you bought to come to your house. Same deal here. So freight in is basically just shipping costs. Now, what does that have to do with inventory? Well, when you buy inventory, say you made a purchase, right? We're now going back to the purchases side. Let's say you made a purchase of inventory to bring into your business so you can sell it later. Well, you're going to have to go ahead and update inventory right away. So you would debit inventory for the cost of the shipping. So inventory will increase for whatever that shipping cost. Uh, to get those goods to your business. Now, what about something called purchase returns? So what that means is as a business, you bought some goods for your business, and now maybe some of those items are defective. So you have to return them back to the supplier. Purchase returns. And how does that look on a, a perpetual inventory accounting? Well, what you do is you show right away, you show inventory going down. I put a little minus sign there. I can also do a down arrow if that's easier. But inventory will go down. If you go ahead and return something, inventory has to be updated in real time, right? So you update inventory right away to show purchases or show your inventory going down because you return those goods back to the supplier. Those special rules are very important in perpetual inventory accounting. So as you can see, the inventory is always updating. You don't have to wait toward the end like periodic. Boo. Now with perpetual, you can expect accurate inventory records on an ongoing basis. Once again, if you make a sale, you see that change in inventory. If you buy more inventory, you see that change in real time. It's always updating to make sure it has the most accurate records possible. Now, let's jump back in and we're gonna practice some problems now so you can apply all of these concepts. Let's do it. Okay, so now for some practice problems. I'm sure you just were dying to practice some of this stuff. So we're gonna go through uh, four different practice problems here, all right? So these are the first two. We're gonna be using toy cars as an example. So imagine you're a business and you sell toy cars, okay? I tend to use this example a lot. I don't know why, toy cars are fun. So your toy car corp, and you bought a thousand units. So I want you guys to get in the habit when you're doing a problem, I want you to circle the number and then underline any type of important word. So bought is pretty important. That means we know that we're buying something and that's gonna affect our accounts. You bought it at $15.60 and shipping, very important, cost $200 in addition. So important numbers, important words here. So. First off, how would we record this? Well, we know we bought these units at this number here. So we're gonna go ahead and calculate that. And so what I wanna do here is um, get out your calculators and we're gonna multiply these two numbers. We're gonna do a thousand times $15 and 60 cents, okay? Let's go ahead and do that together. 15 or a thousand times $15 and 60 cents. I'm using my phone here. Okay, and we get 15,600. Okay, so that right there represents um, our inventory. It's going up. We bought more units, so our inventory increases by that number. Now, before we uh, go too far, we also had shipping. If you remember those special rules, right, with freight in or shipping, if you if shipping costs that much to bring those goods to your business, then you have to include that shipping cost into inventory. So we need to add in 200. And this is our total inventory cost, 15,800. So we're gonna debit inventory for 15,800. And where we're gonna credit, well, let's just say we bought it in cash, and that's super simple. Okay, next. So let's go ahead and go through here if we made a sale. So if you made a sale, we're gonna do sold. That's a keyword there. We sold 300 units, and it's 40 bucks each. That's very important. And then each unit is worth 1350. So we made this sale. So there's gonna be two different entries we're gonna do here and I'll show you what they are. So the first entry we're gonna set up 
we're going to set up that sale and let's say we got cash for it so we're going to debit cash for the sale and we're going to credit our revenue for that sale because we made a sale and we got some revenue now the other entry over here and i'll do uh, on the right right over here we're going to debit when we made that sale we have to go ahead and debit something called cost of goods sold because we made a sale we got to record the cost of what our sale was and then we're going to credit our inventory going down. And I'll just do INV. Now we need to calculate this stuff. So I'm going to move over here. Uh, actually, I'll do it on the left here. First, we're going to calculate how much uh, our sales was. And it's pretty simple. You just take the 300 units times $40. And that's it. And that's not too difficult math. But I'll go ahead and calculate it with me here. 300 times 40. And there we are. $12,000. So 12,000, I'll put just 12K to keep it simple. That's what we made in our sale, right? Now, what about our inventory cost? Well, this 1350 is very important. So we're going to do the same number of units, 300 units times the cost. And that's what we do for inventory. Let's see what we get for that. 300 times 13. All right. Four zero five zero four zero five and that's it that's how you record a sale there it's two entries you got to record on the sales side and then you got to record it on the cost side okay so now for some more practice problems here all right so in these practice problems we're going to talk about returns so returns from both sides the first one returned 2400 of goods so they're the one returning it to the supplier because they're defective how does that look we had the inventory in our possessions and now we're returning it back to the supplier so how do we record this well what we're going to do is actually we're just going to debit um, either back the money we expect to receive or if we get cash right away for the return let's just say that we're going to debit back we we're waiting on the cash to get back into our accounts so we'll just say accounts receivable. Because so we get that money back later on for those returns. And then we credit, because what are we, what's leaving our possession? We're going to credit inventory right away. Because with perpetual inventory accounting, as soon as the change in inventory happens, you make the update to the general journal. Now, the next one here, we received a turn. So let's say that, so Toy Car Corp received a return of 24 units from a customer, uh, it was $4,800. So that was the return there. And each unit cost $12.20. So I gave two numbers here for a reason, I'll show you why. Again, a customer returned the items to us. How do we record that return? Well. From the sales side, let's do the sales side first. We're gonna debit something called sales returns. So they returned it to us. We have to put that on our books as a return. And how much is that for? Well, we're gonna do it for the total of 4,800 of what, it, um, what we sold it for. Now, what do we credit here? Well, we're gonna credit, we have to give um, cash back to that customer. So we're gonna go ahead and record that in cash to pay the customer back for the items they returned. Now on the inventory side, what do we do? Well, we know that each unit costs $12.20 and we got a return of 24 units. So we're gonna debit, what do we debit here? Well, it's remember inventory is updated in real time, right? When we get that return. So we have to debit inventory right away. Now, in this situation, which is kind of interesting, what would we credit? Well, this is perpetual inventory accounting. You have to update the books right away when the inventory change happens. So we're actually going to credit cost of goods sold because that cost of what we sold has to go back, right? It has to be removed because there is no cost anymore because we received a return from the customer. So that's how that works there. And how, what do we uh, mark it down for as far as the number? Well, it's just 24 times $12.20. I'll put that up here so you can see the numbers. Go ahead and calculate this for me. So 24 
times $12.20. And there we are. $292.80. Looks like it did not cost us that much, which is some good margins here for us. Sorry if this is scrunched up a little bit. And there we are. That's how you go and record a return. Um, if you're the company returning the goods to the supplier, and then on the other side of it, if a customer returns it to us, we have to do two entries on the sales side and on the inventory side. And that is perpetual inventory accounting. Not that bad, right? Well, to really sum it up, it's always updating wherever you make a sale or you buy more inventory. It's always going to be updating in real time. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. That really helps me grow this channel and uh, give you more accounting videos to help you learn it the easy way. Now lastly, comment below and let me know, have you ever gone to a business and bought something and then had to later return it? That's called a sales return for that business and that's part of perpetual inventory accounting for them. So have you ever gone somewhere, bought it, and then returned it? Let me know below. And if you have, what did you return? I'm, I'm just curious. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.